So, uh, completely changing the subject before we get started here, uh, Jason, or Jason, uh, so, Greg, no, no, not no. Jason, that <laughs> yeah, is wrong name, Joshua and Greg, uh, welcome to Dungeon Brew. All right, welcome back everybody to Dungeon Brew, this is episode 11 of the Ninth Ascension, we are coming back to... Uh, work out the rest of this campaign as our party has finally just uh, accomplished their final task of gaining the Garafena blood, uh, getting it into vials after a pretty deadly battle that they engaged in at a ruins that was south of the city. Uh, they have now traversed back to the city and were able to turn over the blood to the Carrion Council. There weren't many members in the chambers when they arrived, but they were able to hand this over to Dorfe, who said he was going to get to work right away with Roselia, uh, Dawn's mother, to get the Barkalek done overnight to have it completed by the next morning. So a couple of questions for the party. Did you guys take the time to travel a little bit further out to go store away your magical items again that you had taken with you beforehand? Oh, shit. What do the items look like? Uh, They're very distinct. We've been through that. More, more so, uh, I, okay, I'll, let me ask this. Can can they be hit on our person? You can hide them on your person. I mean, you can shove them in a bag or what have you. None of them can I wrap outside, bandages? Outside of, the, outside of the sword, the sword might be a little right. bit difficult, but you could wrap it, I guess, and put it, you know... How far, how far is this watchtower? So you just, it's in the you just yeah. put it down your pants and just draw a lot of attention as you're walking <laughs> down the street. How far is this watchtower from where we're the city? Uh, to the city is only about an hour. So it's not too far away. But if you were to travel back up to go drop these off and then come back again, you're probably going to expend another 45 minutes or so. I guess my thought is why can't we just hide them? If we're an hour from the city, hide them along the way to the city. For those that want to. Um, Mahil well, would, primarily... would hide his. The reason I primarily ask is because during last session, you guys had talked about certain individuals keeping them. Don is planning right. on shipping out the next day. Yeah, uh, that's Aaron my Mayor point. is planning on returning home the next day. So it leaves Mahail and Sirkon left in the city. So I guess going around the table, who's planning on keeping their item on them? And who's I, planning on storing theirs outside the city? I currently have a gaze, and I intend to take that with me for the free sky magic in order to help with my travels. Okay. Yeah, and Erdemir will take his with him. Um, I don't know if there's a way the... Or he can put him in a bag or wrap bandages around him. Oh. You yeah. have plenty. <laughs> what, happened, what happened to your hands? So I just burnt myself cooking. <laughs> trying to recreate that fish and gravy. And... No, it's more like I'm so grateful for all the gifts of bandages given to me. I wanted to display them. <laughs> yeah, I just explained uh, it. Yes. It's like, Very oh, courteous. It's part of our culture to wear our gifts on the last day of our. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so Aramir is keeping his gauntlets um, in a bag on his person. Don's taking the gaze with him. Uh, but hey, what are you doing with the sword? Uh, I'm going to offer it to Don. Seems like something that could be useful in his travels. I don't. I don't know that. Try, took me off guard. I'm all choked up. Um, <laughs> trying to think. So, like, I would love to keep it, but I can't wear it around the city, and I'm not going to keep going outside of the city and stashing it somewhere. So, Don Don is willing to take it with the understanding that it is yours if you ever request it from him. Basically, sounds good. Um, he he doesn't it's on loan yeah he he understands he it, basically realizing that yeah you you can't it, you're probably not going to be able to use it the way that you've been using it again like this last week and so it makes sense that, that to where it's like it's being put to use rather than just not... being buried yeah it's going to get stashed away somewhere yeah, yeah for a long period of time so yeah with that without understanding yeah he's he's willing to take it Okay, and Sircon, what item do you have? I have the chalice. What are you wanting to do with that? Um, not more mana for Sircon's not a good idea. So <laughs> it's like a drug for him. 
uh, Zircon's going to do the same thing, actually, and take a page out of uh, Mihail's book. Uh, offer the cup to Dawn. Um, yeah, screw you, Aramir. Nothing for you. I know. <laughs> I mean, he can't <laughs> use any of it. He can't can. use it. I know he can't. Uh, yeah. Um, kind of the same thing. Yeah, if, <laughs> if you're wanting him to... Uh, hold on to it and with the understanding again any, anything that you want returned is always returnable uh, I don't think that the uh, the email system is up and running yet for this world yeah probably uh, not and I, and I don't <laughs> even down. I don't even know that like the post is that reliable so um, Klukas is probably the only way you'll get a hold of him and that's assuming that you just wandered the world in Klukas trying to figure out where the hell Dawn went to Clairvoyance yeah. is a thing, right? We'll find you if we need to. <laughs> Realistically, Sircon's not going to live much longer anyway, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> That's a fair point. <laughs> I mean, so long as you stop casting magic, you'll live for the next six, six centuries, you know? Just yeah. stop casting magic. Sure, yeah. That's gone so well this week. It's He's like, addicted it's, at this point. I know, it's like, uh, stop, yeah. just stop doing meth. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> so the second thing that I want to make sure that we accomplish before we start rolling out the story for tonight is that you all were able to make it back. It is going to be a bit after midnight by the time you return. Um, I've already put you in for a long rest. I know that everyone leveled up and they did some healing. Um, but as you get up in the morning, if you're going to apply any other healing to your character, I'd like you to go ahead and do that now. So that's already on the combat tracker. So uh, whether you're putting on bandages or anything else that you can do or putting in your daily healing for the next morning when you're waking up. Uh, so because Eric took I the don't herbs, know what doesn't... everyone put on me last time. Um, <laughs> I know that you are currently suffering from an ability drain. Uh, yeah, I wanted to talk to Dorfe about that. Okay. Yeah. Um, but as far I as the dead. health... I don't know what items they put on me and what they do overnight. So there would uh, have you would band have... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, sir. I was, no, I was just going to say you would have had the bandage, which would have been an immediate, what, two? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, then, then you probably would have had an herb patch. And an herb patch. Did we have a, a salve? I thought we had one salve. Or did you use that? You may use that. I mean, I don't know I don't, what you guys have I don't think inventory. anyone used the salve. I think that it was only herb patches and bandages. Mm -hmm. This is true. So you get, from from the herb patch, you get plus two uh, the next day. Okay. Is there a way to purchase your, healing? You got one for sleeping overnight as well. The only, yes. The Which only would have gone when he did the long rest. It doesn't do it automatically. You have to do it manually. Oh, okay. The only um, healing supplies in the town are bandages, Eretmir. The salves and the herb patches are things you guys picked up off of the Bukhari. Because I don't know if we could, like, pay a healer. Like, can I pay a healer to... Oh, no. 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 Mm -mm. I, I don't... God, these guys are worthless. <laughs> <laughs> like, how much How much is a year of your life worth? <laughs> 50 gold. <laughs> All right, so with that, let's go ahead and start tonight's show. Uh, we are going to begin with Mihail. The next day comes swiftly, uh, the day when those banished are meant to leave before nightfall. With the morning light are gonna come some screams from the docks. I'm gonna need everyone to roll wisdom saves so I know where we're standing at. Uh, but we are going to be uh, bird's eye coming down on Mihail, who is um, in his courtyard. I'm looking right here as you guys' rolls are coming on. Don is going to make his, Sircon's making his, Eretmir is not making his roll. And this is, this is the morning, correct? This is yeah. the morning. Now, would I have been able to get Dorothy to heal me when I we get... delivered the, the blood? Yep. You'll have a conversation with him this morning, so you can have it here. Okay, so I'm taking the negatives on this roll. That would be Rather true. than getting healed the night before. That's, that's... correct. Yep. Yeah, that you wouldn't have made out. that anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't have made that Fine. anyway. <laughs> All right, so we are going to be starting with Sir Mihail. 
um, who is currently not aware. He, he's oblivious to these screams that are going on further on in the city. He's moving across his courtyard, trying to begin, be, start his day. It's a little bit later than he typically would start. And he is met by Jarek, who is running across the courtyard. Sir, sir, I sent soldiers to the docks. Vukari have crossed with boats filled with Vulkanak. They bring beasts to do what they could not. We must hurry. We must bring all that we can. Uh, Mihail is going to be a bit uh, bleary-eyed after the night they had. Um, he'll look kind of confused at Jarek and say, What are you talking about? What attack? They, they sat in boats with a center ships between them that they guided with rope, uh, steering uh, the Vulcanlock across the pass of the Nebu Sea to our shoreline. Uh, the giant man-wolves are ripping citizens apart. Uh, they're tearing through the city. The people are dying. I've already sent soldiers that way. Uh, several of our company are defending what they can. We must hurry. All right. Uh, head that way. Let me get my stuff, and I'll be there shortly. Uh, and I'll uh, turn towards the house to get my gear. As, as you say, and he will turn around and start sprinting towards the dock side of the north end of the city. Um, and as you turn uh, to, towards back to your towards your place, you'll see Dorfe appearing in the courtyard as well, coming from his own area. Um, he has an item wrapped in cloth under his arm, and he's waving you down, saying, Mahel, my son, come. I am it, going it to is, rush over to him. <laughs> it, is, it is done at last. Uh, now's not the time for that, Father. The uh, city you... is back, and I need your aid. Now what aid is it that you need from me, my son? Tell me you want. Uh, what was that creature from last time called? Uh, the Garafena? Yeah. Um, the Garafena did something to my mind. I was hoping you could clear it for me. It sounds like the city is under attack, and I need to be at my best. You only need to be at your best far more than what is happening currently in the city, I assure you. Uh, and he will reach his hand up, and you will uh, feel this warmth as this golden glow presses out from his hand. Uh, you will see his beard that has already lengthened over the magic that he's used recently, uh, gray, uh, more so than it was before, with more strands coming in, as you feel this healing rush wash over you and your ability score uh, regain back to its full potential. And then you will see him take uh, the book. Thank you. The book that is in his hands, uh, he will also utilize magic and he will shrink it down into a pocket-sized version. And he will hand it over to you and say, this is for you to keep, for it is today that I will be leaving the Erhain. Leaving? I told you that once this was done, I could not stay. My loyalties come to Marhina, and it is your duty to stay here and protect the Caligula name. Let our, city, our family reside in power as I go and do what I can to assure that we remain strong. Shared with me, it has been what danger the Klux will bring to our family if we are not strong. Done what I can to weaken them, I have, but it's time for me to leave, yes? I say you must do what you can to keep our bloodline alive. I'll do what I can to protect the city. If you and feel it is necessary to leave. I I do. And um I would like you to roll a wisdom. Hell. With your new your new score. Yay. Oh, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you you hear that the twist of his tongue as he shares this information that you suddenly realize that he's had a part to play in Nemeth Kluke's death. Uh, that he is revealing, he's <laughs> revealing to you without saying it. Um, and, and saying that he has done what he can toward the Klukes to keep them weak so that our family can become strong. He's double speaking here to kind of reveal something to you without revealing it outright. I'm going to be just like a moment of surprise and then back to normal, and I'm not going to comment on it. Now, you likely have not heard the news, um, but Serena Assad, her son, and uh, Kale Benjamin were put to death last night. Um, it is very much 
a time for the Klooks to be reigning. From what I understand, Karina Kluk has picked one of the old relics that were stored in our Frederick for herself to wield uh, in battle as a scepter, so to speak. What relic did she take? Uh, she has what is called Habramani. It is a staff that allows you to cast stone magic uh, with quite force, uh, limiting the amount of mana that it drains from her body, reducing the amount of Kodastavo that she utilizes whenever reaching for stone magic. Is it a wooden stick? Uh, a large one, yes. <laughs> okay. Um, well, the city is under attack, and I need to get to my men. Do you have any other parting wisdom before you flee the city? I have nothing more to say for, with you. I, um, I seek one more body to terminate before I leave the city. One more traitor amongst our midst that was working with Serena. Oh. And he will be seeking this book, so keep it close to yourself and do not let him know that you hold it. Who should I be wary of? Dragoslav Serhan, of course. This was the bearded man who uses yeah. the magic that was also on the Carrion Council. Okay. How was he involved? He simply wants this for his own power. It was revealed during the questioning of uh, Serena last night. Now, mind you, not questioning that Karina did, but questioning I did to her in Klukas. You questioned her after Karina had been through? I uh, questioned her prior. No. Oh. Okay. I imagine that uh, Karina got very little out of her after our conversation. Going to give him kind of a wary look, but just glaze over that. Yeah, I don't think I've got anything else to ask you. Okay. Um, so he is going to give you a swift bow and say, Be well, my son. Keep the Kligler name strong. Eat it. And keep us here within Leerheim. I will do my best. Safe travels. And uh, he is going to turn on his heel and make his way out of the Kligler courtyard. And then we will be turning to Eretmir, um, who I believe also failed his check of awareness. Eretmir, you uh, uh, took the brunt of the blow after the previous battle the night the night before. Um, you're really at what about half life right now. Mm -hmm. uh, you 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 found your resolve in a bottle the night before, um, as you do, uh, unwilling to go into the temple of Marhina. So you are a bit hungover from the night before. Um, the cries kind of tickle at your ear as you are on the temple of Marhina where you fell asleep under the night's moon. Um, and for whatever reason, like I said, you couldn't bring yourself into the temple. You just no longer felt comfortable in that stead. So you are gathering your bearing. When you see Andre Kochi, your drinking buddy, fleeing <laughs> down the street, crying out, help, help, and at his heels is a large wolf uh, that is chasing him down. Uh, this appears to be a um, one of the wolves that you fought before that is uh, transformed from a Vukari as this thing is chasing him down. How would you like to respond? Well, don't see that every day. Um, I, he'll probably kind of stretch his achy body a little bit and chase after the wolf. Well, the, Andre seems to be running directly towards you oh, uh, <laughs> with the wolf at his heels. So you gotcha. won't have to run too hard. Or yeah, too he'll hard. just get ready his axe and, and just like um, kind of signal Andre to run towards him and say, get behind me. And he'll All just right. have his axe ready to swing. Decapitates Andre, just runs by. <laughs> <laughs> roll me. I don't want to. Hey. I don't want to kill my drinking buddy. <laughs> roll me an attack roll. All right, here we go. Don't forget the hungover penalties. <laughs> yeah, I don't with need a, any penalties. Damn. Damn. With a Twenty. That is a surefire hit. You cut straight into the beast, killing it where it is. And as your axe pulls free from its mangy skin. Uh, you see it shifting back into a middle-aged woman, naked, lying at your feet. And Andre will grab a hold of your arm and say, Oh, thank you, Master Spellini. It would have had my throat, and I fear that even a trickle of magic from my fingers would have possibly ended it, but it would have ended me as well. Uh, speaking of which, uh, 
You don't have any healing you could give me, do you? <laughs> um, I have a couple bandages on my person. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and he's going to he's going to look at you and, and see the clear cuts you have. Like you um, are bleeding in several areas again because you have been injured quite a bit from the night before. He goes, "What, what harm has come to you to cause you to be hurt so?" Oh, uh, you know, going out fighting things. You got these wolf things. Uh, all these uh, creatures here. Like, what isn't there to hurt me? Hey. You've done so much and given so much for our city. I fear that you have not been given the proper due deserved to you. Um, roll me a charisma, Eric Mir. Ah, uh, secondary with a 13. Uh, he'll say, he goes, I hate uh, to give everything that I am uh, for you to live, especially given my duties here within Leerheim and for the Ninth Council. But perhaps I have a little that I can. And he uh, will reach out and touch your side, uh, healing you for nine. Damn. So he doesn't use one of his stronger spells that would have killed him. You see, though, that as he uses it, it does weaken him to the point that he does have to take a knee and then struggle back to his feet again from the magic that he has expended. Uh, Aaron Amir will reach into his bag and pull out one of the bottles of wine he has and offer it to him and say, stay safe. I say that that's probably the most proper exchange I've had in a season. Oh, well, I hate to ask any more of you, but there are more enemies on the docks, and if you can lend your arms, your strength, one more time before heading back to your city, our people would greatly appreciate it. Yeah, I figured I'd have to go somewhere today. All right, and excellent. Aramio will uh, turn on his heel, begin moving towards the docks as well. And that will shift us to Don, who is currently sitting at the table with his mother and daughter, finishing his breakfast. When the shouts reach the door, they reach your ear, Don. The call of arms is only softened by your daughter, who rushes over to you. Tato, we were to leave today. And Need speaks the truth. Your belongings are already packed for your trip. They're by the door. And it will be your mother who sighs there's a tired look in her eye from staying up all night finishing the varkalak with dorafe um you know that she only recently actually stumbled through the door just moments before the sun uh rose um, she's had very little sleep and she's gonna say oh, yeah you're not gonna get far with beasts on the docks she knows they're on the docks well there's a sound <laughs> from which it's coming from She's okay. also aware, like you are, that the sounds that you're both hearing with your checks, uh, that is coming from that direction. Hmm. She planned it. <laughs> she planned it. I can tell decisively. <laughs> Sound is coming from the docks. <laughs> <laughs> well, I suppose that just means they'll have to let us stay a little while longer. I suppose so. Should we bar the doors and stay here? Perhaps Mihail will be able to hold them off with what men remain in the armies. Yeah, he probably could. But I won't leave him to it alone. And knowing the others, they'll be there beside him. Keep Needs safe. I'll be back. Very good. Hey. With a heavy sigh, he'll stand up and start moving the door. Okay. Are you taking any of the magical items that have been given to you with you? No. Um, they will be packed away, and I will make sure that my mother knows where they are and what they are. Okay. Because they're, good. Yeah, they're, they're, they're more important to get need out of the city and keep her safe than they are for me. Okay. All right, excellent. Don will exit his home. As you step out into the streets, you see madness as people are running about. You're probably the closest to the docks as anyone else. Um, um, before I leave, can I take the cloth? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So I'll take that real quick, and that's two per level. Yes. And you have leveled, so that should be 12 additional mana you got. 
Um, and uh, you will hear the door close behind you um, and uh, the, lo- the latch flip as your mother sits in there to protect Need. Is there anything that I can cast on the door to strengthen the bar in some way? Like, almost like a lock spell or something that I could then release when I return? Um, that's a really good question. I'm trying to think of what school that would fall underneath. I almost feel like it would be void, would be my guess, but I that can't. My... But, I mean, I if I had to do something else, it would be something that I would think I would have to cast again to undo. Yeah, uh, my... My concern is, is that some of the spells, like the protective pieces that were like, were barriers for um, even like, the, the temple were above you guys' range. Um, or but they're I mean, like force magic type things. Or they're force magic things. I mean, but you, you will see that your mother, or at least trust that your mother will use like stone magic to reinforce the door on the other side. Okay. All right. I mean, and she knows where um, the other items are, so she could use the, the one in order to use sky magic to help as well. Yeah, absolutely. Place. All right, and that will bring us to Sir Khan, finally, who is sitting alone in his home, yep. uh, weakened from the fights over the last few days. Uh, when the sound for support reaches your ears, you can feel your spirit it is nearing death's doorstep. Um, there's a coldness that touches your cheek. I'd like for you to roll me a wisdom check. Can we clarify? Is he like twitching because he doesn't oh, have the mana no. like he had before? Still made it. <laughs> he still made it with a roll of a twelve. He made that. Um, a coldness touches your cheek, Sir Khan, um, and you can only hope that it is the frozen witch's embrace, that of Marhina. And out of the your vision, um, you're going to see a flash of a woman with pale skin and flattened black hair filling your vision. Her blue eyes are piercing as she leans forward into you and says, Done tall, my subject. There is still glory to be had. And then that vision is going to shift away, and you feel as though you have just seen the manifestation of Marhina before your eyes. Sir Gon's not going to say anything. He's just going to stand up. Kind of steal himself a little bit. And head out the door, which I imagine he's going to run into Eretmir right there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, so is Sir Khan able to run, or do I need to like throw him on my back and carry him? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel like, did she say this? Like, you know, there's still glory to be had, and he gets up and grabs a cane and is just like, ah! ah. <laughs> I mean, that, that, that is a good point. Like, he, doesn't, how, how... he doesn't have a cane. He has a walker, and it's got <laughs> tennis balls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how how bad is Sircon? I, I like, mean, in, in regards to like life, you're doing well. You're just old. Like you literally know that the casting of too much magic gives you the risk of losing that point and dying, right? Of your constitution. So, so like how- you are you are functional in terms of like you can do things, um, but it, it's like you know that just the, the wrong twist of your wrist and you're gonna drop. So is is he like Andre at this point? Yeah, then? He, he's pretty mm-hmm. close to Andre. I mean, I'm not going to say that like he can if he casts magic, he'll just drop. But how many mana do you have left before you roll again, Sir Gun? Four. Uh, four. Five? Five. 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 Three right now. Mahal, Mahal is the official counter. Five. Yeah. <laughs> so like yeah. you cast right. one fourth level spell and you're rolling, which could potentially kill you. So you, you have yeah. like a good like couple of like one or two level spells in you, but at that point, like you are playing at death's door. Five yep. mana and you have a 33% chance of death. Yes. Yep. That's the way I like it. That's how good Sir Khan's doing. High risk, <laughs> high reward. Let's go. Exactly. <laughs> Couldn't be dead. If you make that roll, be. then you got another eight. That's right. Yeah. So here we are. You guys will eventually come together, moving down the streets from different angles, falling in line as you march towards the docks, um, hearing the sounds of battle taking place as individuals are fighting back and forth across the stretch of it. You will be moving your way, meandering through the homes. And as you uh, get closer, you will see that uh, you have some axemen out there that are fighting. Jared is fighting along with the swordsmen. 
and that you have some bowmen that are still standing as these massive, nearly seven, eight foot tall werewolf-like creatures called the Volkadok are storming up on the walls onto the, uh, God, I'm gonna forget the word. What's the word, John? There's the W. I'm sorry, I, I was I was on my own, in my own way. The wharf. The, the wharf is what I want. You have sorry, I was examining the, the battlefield. I was not paying attention to what you were saying close enough. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> that they are the, the, these are storming upon the wharf um, in some ships that are just slightly further back are coming onto shore that have some Vukari that are on them. These are the Vukari that were holding the ropes steering the boats that were carrying across these monstrosities. Um, I'd like for those that are Suhi and roll me an intelligence check so that you can have some knowledge about the Vukamak. And that looks like a success all the way around the table. You guys know that these Volkadlok are said to be the cursed creatures of the Bukhari that broke away and were stuck in these forms. Um, They have no ability to speak, no ability to reason or rationale. They are pure beasts um, in their form. Um, And that you also know that they um, don't go down without a fight. Even when you've cut them many times, if you don't take them down quick enough, that they will oftentimes get back up again. And sometimes it takes fire to um, get them to go down quicker. So. Not from this guy. <laughs> so, uh, here we are. You guys are on the docks. You can see the map. I'll encourage you to use good explanation as we work through this battle. Good description uh, for those folks that can't see this. And we'll roll initiative. I need you guys to roll a better initiative than the cleric, please. <laughs> a five, one, four, five. Hey, I, we're all I tied with you. Or I'm tied with you. It just didn't give it to me all right well sir Khan, you are going to be the first one of the group that is going to be moving forward so if you would like to describe what you are doing i will work through some of the rest of these before you for the enemy since none of them are going to reach you this round all right so uh, since we're we, we appear to be uh, kind of on the road that looks like there's a stall uh, kind of off to about 10 feet to sir Khan's right mm-hmm. um does that stall provide any kind of cover? I mean, is there, like, is it, I mean, is, is there goods? Is there a barrel, a bench, but something Sircon could? There are barrels in it that you can kneel behind to give yourself cover. Okay. So I'm going to move 10 feet uh, to my right, and I'm going to kneel down behind those barrels. Um, and since I have my, my crossbow um, with me, I will uh, shoot at the... Uh, Vukalok that's uh, threatening the Axemen about 20 feet to my my north here. Okay. Uh, Sircon's knee kind of gave out as he bent, bent down. Um, crossbow accidentally went off and hit the side of the house and off shot off into the wharf. Yeah, with a critical miss, you're lucky you didn't shoot yourself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sircon <laughs> runs up and suicides himself, un- unalives himself. It's hard to use a crossbow <laughs> when you have a walker at the same time. Yeah, well, you know, the the plan was to set the walker down and the crossbow on top, kind of stabilize yeah, just, things. Yeah, yeah, no, that uh, makes sense. Yeah, it just didn't work out that way. That's my turn. Damn All right, it. Don. So I just want to uh, step over here in front of Sir Khan and aim between the stall and shoot a line of fire through both of the Vukalok that are threatening the Axemen. Um kind of like Agonazar's Scorcher to some degree, and I'm just going to use, this is going to be a level 1 spell, I'm going to use 2 mana for this. Um, So several targets with saves for half. Right, excellent. Max damage. Yeah, and both both failed their saves. Yeah, fire just burst through both of them. Um, Now these guys had moved up on the Axemen army and they actually slaughtered almost half of the Axemen group that was left standing there just amongst the two of them. Uh, So your attack on them uh, definitely has given the Axemen a a upper hand for what remains of them. Love it. All right, that's gonna put up German Hale. So I'm gonna step up to the left of Eretmir, kind of get uh, behind the Axemen here. So I'm going to move up this way where I'm within 15 feet of the Axemen group. And I'm going to cast 
a fourth level spell. Because why not? <laughs> All right, you guys, and your mana. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to cast Dragon Scales. Do it. Take a roll. Nice. And, Sircon. and uh, what that does for the next six rounds, everyone within, everyone within 15 feet of me right now gets a plus four to their AC as Dragon Scales cover their bodies. Wow. Nice. Oh my god. All right. And I don't have anything to drop on you guys for that. So, yeah. Adjust accordingly. <laughs> oh my god. You're going to make Eretmir a beast. And that was five mana? Mm hmm. So you're and. Right. No. no. I've still got three till my next roll. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's Tracy. And then, as I do that, I'm gonna call for everyone to hold the hold the docks. All right, and Very that's good. my turn. Aramir. All right. Well, let's see here. Hmm. Um. I, I have to ask really quick. Sorry, sorry, Todd. Uh, Greg, does this put dragon scales on everyone's body? Like an like an elusive dragonary like dragon scales like covers everybody to give them that AC bonus. I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. So Eretmir, you are just like marching up, and suddenly your body starts going <laughs> all down uh, okay. the sides. So, <laughs> technically, it's a giant dragon scale that makes a shield that follows you around. But oh, I like okay. I like the skin coating better. I like the skin coating <laughs> too. I just also like the idea that Eretmir is suddenly being like cloaked in his worst enemies. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm wearing I'm wearing the dragon bone armor, so that probably wouldn't bother me. I feel like for him, it just kind of spreads from his sash, and it's uh -huh. the golden scales along with it. <laughs> yes. All right, Aramir, you're up. All right. Well, I mean, if, if that's what I have, you're, you're going to hear kind of a, uh, a uh, the scales kind of I guess rubbing against each other as he, he moves, um, and he's going to run up here, kind of get around this axeman over here, and he's going to use his ability of a whirlwind attack, and yeah. he is going to hit both of the or well, he's going to swing at both of them, but he's taking his axe and just uh, cleaving it across, um, and let's see how well this works out for him. Finally, the Escalini is moving in for his double attack. <laughs> and the first one's a miss. Yeah, Come on! Right. Yeah! The yeah, 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 one's a hit. All right, first Shock seven amazed. damage. He is still standing, but he is hurting bad. And that is going to put us into the next round with Eretmir back at the top of the round. Uh, right. But not before this Mukadlock has an opportunity to attack you back. All right. So the first one is at the top. He is going to bite and claw at you, Eretmir. Uh, here's the bite, and that is going to be a hit. And then oh, will I get to... the plus four to my AC? Does that help oh. me? Any? Yeah. Yeah. What's your AC? I thought you added it on manually. Oh well, I didn't know if I was going to go out of the range. So. Um... No, it's the range is only when I cast. You're good. Oh, okay. Rounds. I, I don't see a way to manually adjust our ACs. Yeah, so. we can't. I, I just went into the combat section and under miscellaneous modifier put in a four. Okay. Oh, okay. well, I'll do this. The same. This would have just made your, that would have made your AC an 18 and he rolled a 19, so he still would have hit you okay. with a bite attack. All right. Wait, so I have more AC? I got a better AC than you do here at Mirror? Yes, you will. I think most of you do. Jeez. I'm rocking a 13 normally, so he's better than me. <laughs> yeah, that, that put me at an 18 as well. Um, and I, I used need to, roll to be me better, a, but my dex went down. I need to roll me a wisdom save. Eric Mirror? No. Ooh, uh, and that is a fail as he sinks his teeth into you. Uh, you are going to feel your strength reduced by one. Mm. Oh, God. All right, and then you are up. I know you got to get All your right. stuff adjusted first. Strength down by one, AC up by four. Mm -hmm. Um, Erdemir will swing at the one that, um, he missed that first one, but the second one he hit, he's going to swing at the second one, swinging his axe, just bringing it up high again, trying to just take this thing out. Yeah. Come on! Oh, another miss. <laughs> All right. 
you are up, Don. Uh, I'm going to repeat the same move. So I'm going to use uh, another thing of a beam of fire that goes through both of them. Same angle, they haven't moved, and so it'll be uh, another save for half. All right. Minimum damage this time for seven. Uh, looks like one of them made it, but the other one did not. Um, so this will kill the one on the back side. Uh, that Ermir has done the most damage to, but there is one still standing. And it looks as though the Axeman will actually finish off the other Bukhari that's standing there anyway. So with your damage that you did to him, the Axemen are going to be able to take him out. And that is going to bring up Sir Mihail as the rest of the battle is unfolding around the wharf. So I will move up to stand next to the group of Axemen. And then I'm going to spend a mana to chuck my sword at Bukhari 1 over here. Okay, so Bukhari 1 is coming up the docks towards you guys where the two Ukudlok just fell down. You're throwing your sword at him. Man, that is a hit. Very good. All right. Now, this is just a normal Gladius. It's not my fancy one. So there's minimum damage. Excellent. That would explain the minimum damage of three. Yeah. And then I'm going to tell the Axemen to advance. All right. And Sircon. Uh, Sircon's going to step out about five feet, get a little bit better view. Um, since Don's, which appreciated it, but Don's in the way. Uh, <laughs> and uh, attempt to shoot one of these, one of the Vukari. Yeah, that is a hit with a 15. There we go. Very nice. Four damage to him. He's going to notch another crossbow or another bolt. And that'll put Eretmir back up at the top of the round. All right. Well, let's see. Um, Eretmir will move up to here. And he's going to try his whirlwind attack again. Um, and let's see how this goes. All right, so you're using your primal ability to be able yes. to utilize this a second just, time. Yep. All so right. he's just going to swing it, trying to cleave them both in half if he can. All right. That is a nice. success with a 24. All right, for that guy. And here comes this guy. Come off the 20. It's still a hit. It's still a hit. I know, but a 20 would have been better. <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah, swings it. I guess the one guy dies, so maybe I cleaved him in half, and then the other guy, a pretty good wound on him. Yeah, very good. Uh, so, yeah, he goes down. Uh, you were going to have the Vukari in front of you uh, shape shift into a wolf and they disappear. Yeah, he'll be there. <laughs> He's going to shapeshift into a wolf and then bite at you. And he'll be successful with a 20. I feel like my dice are not rolling. I had that. That's what right. I was going on with that crossbow bolt. It, was, it did not want to roll damage. So freaking frustrating. <clears throat> uh, that is going to put right. up Sircon next as the bowmen are firing in the background at some of the other Vukadlok that are coming up. Oh, man, I'm going to tell you the bowman and the swordsman have not hit anything yet. Sircon is, uh, he's going to pull his flail and move up here and attempt to smack the wolf. Oh, and that is a miss with an eight. All right, that is going to end up putting up Dawn while the other ones are still battling in the background. All right. I have a question. I don't know how exactly this would work. I would like to do something where I basically cause a stone to come up and coat Eretmir's body and grant him what effectively would be temporary HP. So that as he's being attacked, like if he gets hit, it's chipping away chunks of rock and stone and sand rather than harming him. Okay. You know, we have done none of this kind of magic around Eretmir this whole time, and all of a sudden he's getting all kinds of weird shit done to him. I know. Uh, so I don't know how he feels about this either. <laughs> I, I want to point out, no, I've done it. It's just mostly been in healing. Well, yeah. 
But he's got dragon scales now. He's about to have stone skin. Which are kind of cool, except that the the scales are kind of getting in his mouth. And it's just, you know, that's kind of uncomfortable. I don't know how you guys feel about it. John, what I'm going to say is use the second column of the one target save negates damage, except for we're not going to use the save on it. And depending on how much mana you cast is how much... uh, he, he gets, yes. I'm going to use three mana, so it'll be 4d4 plus 12. Yep. So 19, 19 temp 19. HP for wow. Eric. How much that mana did you use on that one? Three. That H me. How many? Shit, I think I missed one for you. What did you I, do last round? I did two, two, fire two. No, I did two, two, and three. Yeah. Two, 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 two. three. Yeah. Uh, just FYI, next round I'm going to go touch somebody to get back six. Okay, so that last round actually would have made you roll. Okay. But when I touch somebody, it's going to go in the first, right? Uh, you're at three onto your next roll. Yeah, so that'll bring me back so... into the previous tier again. And then if you roll three uh, okay. again, you're going to be back over it. Yeah, we'll mm-hmm. just wait till the end of combat to worry about it, I think. All right. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. Uh, that is going to bring up Sir Mahail next. All right. So I'll move up to uh, get by this cart here. And I'm going to assess the situation. Uh, in front of us here with uh, the wall where the dock goes down, how tall is that? Uh, it's only like maybe five feet. It's about five feet. Yeah. By the way, as you are going, the Axemen are going to go up and they are going to slaughter the Bukhari that was attacking Eretmir. So this wolf will be killed as the Axemen move up on him, tear him down and start moving onwards towards the next Bukhari. I think I'm going to just go ahead and double move to get up next to the swordsmen and check on them and see how they're doing. Are they in a rough way? Do I need to pull them out? They're they're injured a little bit. Jarek is still fighting with them, so um, they're doing okay, but they're about halfway gone for the army. But as you run up to them, you are going to see that the bowmen just got obliterated by the Bukhid Lock that were moving up on them. Great. All right, I'd like to action surge at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the thing you can do. <laughs> I'm sure it is. We have magic. All right, uh, that's what I got. So you just ran up to check on them? I double moved to get up there. Oh, okay, okay. All right, uh, the Axemen already went. The Bukid Lock are going. Uh, the Swordsmen are going to storm forward to kind of hold off these people as you were coming up to join them, and that is going to put Don up. Damn it. <laughs> There's like an entire damn army up there, and I really want to touch this guy and suck him off so that I can get my <laughs> I want to my mana back. But I feel like I well, really need to... Well, there's plenty of guys to suck off over here. There there are. There's there's a lot. But I just feel like I need to yeah, I need to deal with them. Yeah, I gotta do a fireball. Ah, <laughs> nice. Oh, God. I mean, how can I not? Yeah. You're taking it from me. Do you want to do it, old man? Because I will let you have this. I will let you have it and die. It'll be your moment of glory. I won't die. I'll I'll have one I'll have you know, one mana before I have to roll. I think. Uh, it's well, uh, it costs it costs four. Yeah. I don't know how. Yeah. You, you are next. Five, so you you, are, you are next. Fireball. Do you want to do the fireball? You do the Look, fireball. We probably I'll let need you have two this. to kill him. It's okay. No, go ahead and do your fireball. Okay. I don't want to take it from you. That's all I'm saying. All right, I've rolled for the guys that are in your fireball. You just have to drop damage so I know what it is. Only one guy is going to make his save amongst all of them. And that is going to be 21 damage for your fireball, which will kill the wolf that is sitting in there. Let's see. That will kill the Vukadlock 3 that is standing in there. That will kill the Vukadlock 4, who only had 13 lives. He l- rolled low, so it will murder him as well. Vukari 2, it will also kill. What? Oh he wasn't God. even in the circle. That, that guy oh. wasn't even near. <laughs> yeah, he was. Uh, Vukari, sorry, two, sorry. Vukari 2 was in there. There's two twos over here. I'll move this oh. over here. Oh, okay. You deleted oh. the wrong one. Yeah, I deleted <laughs> the wrong one. 
like some he random turned guy around. hit by a, he a turned shield around. flying in the there was, an ex, there was an explosion, a rock flew over and hit him in the head. Yeah. <laughs> Shrapnel. It will kill six, five will still be standing. And one was just outside of it, so it didn't actually hit him. Yeah. That, that cleared up the battlefield. You guys now have three guys left on the battlefield. Uh, and that puts us this on to follow that up with. Um, you Sir feel a little emasculated there, Zircon? Walk up to this guy with his flail now. <laughs> slap him with at, it. And swing at him. Just walk up and slap him. <laughs> and you missed. <laughs> miss. <laughs> and Aramir. Alright, um, let's see here. You know, Aramir wants to do a little bit of flair here and um, I don't know. Can, can, can he like run to this post and like just jump and twirl around to hit this guy from behind? You can. Absolutely. All right. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna run and there's a post that's just a little a uh, little off behind the Vukari, and he's just gonna jump off it, swing around, um, and let's see, is it behind him? Is a plus two? Yep. All right. And. Don't let me down. Come on. You're showing off. That is a hit with an 18. There Not good damage either. Yeah. He still brings standing, that axe right into his him. back. And that, actually, you're up again, Eric. Man. Oh, oh, man. That poor guy. <laughs> yeah, you All smack right. him right upside the head, stun him, um, and bring your weapon back for a second swing. Uh, right before he swings, he's going to kind of breathe on his axe like a give it some luck. Um, and then he'll uh, swing at this Picari again. Oh, Great. oh I should have been man. blown on the axe more often. Um, <laughs> That's critical. Oh, of uh, death. Well, well, you're nice again. Well, yeah, he's yeah. dead anyway. Doesn't Three matter. ones. That was awesome. <laughs> Minimum. That is an amazing. You know, right, yeah. Oh. You only have three life left. I don't care. I want the other. <laughs> oh, there, that's better. Plus yeah. another ten. Uh, Don, you're going to see the swordsman uh, moving up on the wolf who is scorched a little bit. The Volkerlock that is scorched a little bit, but they actually miss him, and then you are up. Uh, Don is going to take a step back and go suck off one of the dead Volkerlock or Vukari or whatever he can reach to regain six mana. Okay. So Six? Yeah. Yeah. That puts you one after your roll. Yeah, I actually thought after your that, fireball. That, that, would, that would screw me over getting the but it is what it is. All right. Uh, that will put up one of uh, the Bukhari who is going to transform into a wolf and then bite the swordsman. And he misses uh, that attack, which is going to put Sircon up. Uh, Sircon's going to move because he, he dropped his crossbow. So he's going to move here, and that's Sircon's move. All right, the Axeman have to actually use a double movement as well to catch up where you're at, which will put up the Vukalok uh, that will be attacking the Swordsman in the front. They are successful in that, which will wipe out the rest of the Swordsman army. Dang it, there goes our bonus XP for saving a unit. Including Jarek. So they kill Jarek in that God, well. you worthless. And Sir Mihail, you've lost your second Voivode. And you are up. Ah. Uh... Secret That's binge. unfortunate. All right, so we're doing with the whole uh, dragon theme with my spells here. So in a fit of anger, I am going to yell and breathe fire. Essentially, right. I want to do fireball, just directed in a cone at these two. Oh, good lord! Okay. <laughs> well, you guys used to have a dog. Yes. This is major overkill, but go for it. I love it. No, that's good. I love it. Uh, they need some saves. I don't know. They need a save. How, much, have. how big of a spell is this one? It's they, third level. They miserably. Oh, this God. Like that's oh, man, 66. Three. They're gone. Yeah. Yeah, they don't even have enough life for half. The wolf oh, has. Oh, my God. 28 <laughs> damage. The wolf had Just. six, and the Vulcan Lock had five left. Jared Just was my last boy vote. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very unhappy right now. You did um, interviews last so week or you were had them scheduled. Can we sprinkle some seasoning on the Vukalok? I mean, <laughs> they, they all look like Nemeth. 
Well, the Vukula, <laughs> when they die, do they uh, do they turn back to human form, or are they just stuck in the wolf form? They're stuck in the wolf so form. Oh, the so wolf we could eat them, right? That wouldn't be cannibalism. No, would it? No, okay. no. Um, for for Jared, is he like toast host, or like would a spare the dying cantrip as like stabilize him? Uh, Jarek, you could stabilize him. I'm gonna go ahead and I'll I'll use one mana and stabilize him. Okay. Yeah. Did you use any mana that fight? No, just, just that one. Okay. Just, That's what I thought. I just wanted to make sure I didn't miss anything because we're gone. Uh, <laughs> he's working. He's trying to go cold After turkey, your okay? After seven rolls there. I, I did age myself. I lost one dex and I finally gained oh. one intelligence. So it's hey. a, hey. that was a, it was a pretty <laughs> decent trade-off. <laughs> the All entire right. campaign yeah. to get there. All right. So once more, you guys will oh, uh, yeah. find your successful with the onslaught of the Vukari, which you hope to be the final onslaught for the summer time period, uh, with their dead scattered across the docks. You had some losses with your swordsmen and your bowmen and half of the Axemen army, but with the right leadership, hopefully you can bring in more young men to join the army before next spring slash summer. Um, I think better start probably... breathing. Yeah, better, <laughs> well, better get after it. Well, Sir like, Khan. how many people Sir were Khan, killed in this it. fight now? Like, a lot. Has okay. this t has this place become uh, unincorporated yet? Or, <laughs> uh, I mean, I mean we had still an Archon, like three so. platoons there, and we only had like six left. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, city defenses are not good right now. It's looking rough. Um, no, is no, no wild ideas, Aramir. Go back home to your Spolini. Uh, my That's negative his plan. one. He's gonna come back. The negative one that I have does that go away eventually, or after a week it'll go away. Oh, okay. That's yeah. a reasonable amount of time. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this is a good part for our break. So we'll step away here and then come back to finish out this session.
Welcome back, everybody. We're back from our break to finish out the rest of this story with the Ninth Ascension. This will be our last episode because we've accomplished so much because a fireball ended that battle so quickly. So we're going fireball. to uh, wrap up our heroes' stories as they bring everything here within Learheim to conclusion. So we have Mihail, who is on the docks, that is doing rough estimates uh, as a... Um, oh my gosh, I'm going to forget the name of it. I'm looking to Jonathan again for this. The individuals in the, the books wharf? go around and... Well, it's the wharf. <laughs> yeah, like, thanks, Greg. Uh, no, it's the individual that goes around and, and counts the number of dead, the number of people with their throats cut. Um, uh, the throat cutter? I guess throat cutter would make sense, yeah. So, Mihail is going around. To me. He, he's uh, essentially taking a count of how many men he has left alive and how many died on the docks, um, waiting for... Don and Eretmir to come back for him to wish them farewell. Sir Khan and Eretmir are heading off to the Temple of Marhina, and Don is heading off back home to retrieve his mother and daughter, as well as their belongings to ship out on the boats now that the docks are clear. So let's start with Sir Khan and Eretmir, who are heading to the Temple of Marhina. It won't take you guys too long to make your way through the streets uh, to the temple doors. And I will turn it over to you as you guys. Uh, arrive and go inside to find Sir Khan's mothers within the main area of the temple. Let me get that door for you, old man. Thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> Edith Miner, I, uh, I appreciate all your help this week. This has been not an easy task, and it was a lot of my kinsmen did not put a uh, Good light on our people. I appreciate your help. Well, it started off as a simple transaction, and a week later, or well, ten days later, uh, but eh, we're through it. And the Espolini will continue to do trade. I'm sure you're going to need weapons, so. With what is left of this city, sure. Um, as we walk in, uh, mothers, I believe you owe this man his debt. And Estera and Parmas will turn towards you, um, somewhat taking it back because this is really the first time they've seen their son, uh, since he's come back after fighting the yeah. Pena, uh, who is aged almost to death's door, as we mentioned earlier. Uh, so there's a slight gasp, uh, from Parmas, um, and Estera is stepping back as well, being my son. <sighs> what? I'm sorry that you have given so much uh, for this city. And uh, she's going to have a tear uh, bubble up at the corner of her eye and, and turn away, almost having a hard time looking upon you, and quickly strut off to go get the money for Eretmir. Um, and Parmas will say, uh, Master Spellini, we appreciate all that you've done for our city and holding our history in your esteem. I hope that you wish the seventh uh, regards for what is left of the Carrion Council. I will. I'll pass along uh, what's going on here and we'll see how our relationship continues. Well, I imagine that much of it will be done in secret for those that are loyal to Marina and those that have changed their allegiance. I believe that some of the underground tunnels that link our cities are still clear. Uh, so if you would like to speak to your father, you can let them know that those loyal to Marina will seek out the Seventh to keep them informed of continuous operations within the city and our efforts to keep worship of the Frozen Witch alive amongst those here. I will relay that to my father. And shortly after, uh, we will have Estera come back with the rest of the monies that are owed to Eretmir, and uh, she will pass that over um, to him, averting her eyes from her son. I'll, as she hands him the money, I, I'll grab her hand. Mother, it was worth it. The book is done. That was the point. 
Is it safe, though? I do not know where it is. I know it was crafted, but I have not seen it. And there were whispers that there are snakes amongst us that are seeking it. Do I know where it's at? No, you don't even know. Mahale has Mahale has not that. told anyone that he actually has the book. Nor do you know that others are seeking it. Okay. Well, who's seeking the book? What do you mean? Lorefe mentioned uh, Dragoslav was working in cohorts with Serena Assad, who was put to death with Jernim last night uh, by Karina Kuk. Um, I do not know who Dragoslav is. I have not seen him. I had hoped that maybe he fled the city with his secrets known. But he apparently has been biding his time to gain access to the book, uh, hoping to utilize it for his own power hoping to find his own blessings with Mahina. I, and she's going to look at you and she goes, I know it isn't what you want to hear, but with you at death's door, me and your mother will have no choice but to approach the door with you to create another child in hopes of giving the Amaria name enough strength and potentially a future here within Learheim to hopefully protect this book if it has been lost to us. You've given everything to protect it, and it may very well be gone. Well, we have time. Um, perhaps Mihail or Don know the whereabouts of the book. It was crafted, we know that, right? I know that Dorofe and Rosalia spent the night crafting it. I, I suspect... Know any- <laughs> Knowing Dwarf, hey, he had his, uh, he had a loop. It is our hope. I'll speak to Mahil on this. Well, see Erdmir out of the city safe. From what I understand, he's overstayed his welcome. Uh, he was asked by the previous Archon to make haste in his exit in <laughs> not so many words. I imagine Karina Kluk will be looking for him to make his leave as well. Well, his contract's been fulfilled as it is. Thank you, Mother. Yeah. Thank you for all that you have given. I'm sorry that we were as hard on you as we were. And Parmas will nod in agreement and move forward to share in the embrace that you have with Estera. I'll kiss Swatter hand away. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll kiss them both on the cheek. Um, turn to Aramir. I don't want to kiss. Are you sure? <laughs> I'm sure. Stu, he and Way. It has to be done. <laughs> and I, uh, I say we head to the docks. Let's see you off. Find Dawn and Mahail. So Sir Khan and Eric Mir head away, and we will now shift our focus to Don, who is returning back to his home um, in the streets. Upon approach, he will see that the door has been busted open. There is a death scream that reaches his ear as he nears the door. And Don, as you rush forward, you will see your mother fall against the wall. Um, with the magical sword thrust through her body. It appears as though she had been using it to protect herself, but Dragoslav has utilized it against her, and now he stands over Mead, grabbing her by the scruff of her neck, turning just in time to see you enter the doorway. Fireball. (laughs) Is Is the sword still in my mother? It is. Chief has is, slumped to the floor with the sword. Is, where, give me a give me a layout of the room if you don't mind. Sure. Um, so you have an open room that has a. Hopefully you can see the map yourself. But mm-hmm. as you step into the door, um, you will have an open room with a table where you shared frequent meals, sitting against the wall. Um, across the way, nearly thirty feet, is where Dragoslav is standing with need in his grasp. Behind them is a fireplace that has run cold 
and just about 10 feet away from him is your mother who is slumped against a wall that leads to a small hallway that uh, leads to both of your bedrooms within the small abode. Okay, so I'm going to start speaking to Dragoslav, but while I'm doing that, I'm going to be using sky magic to take the sword out of my mother behind him and start moving the sword into a position to attack him with. Okay, and as you are speaking to him, he will be shouting, Don't make it, you will tell me where the book is, or your daughter will meet the same fate as your mother, and we will roll initiative. Okay. Go, Don. I gotta move stuff out of my screen so I can see what you rolled. A 10! Don has rolled max initiative with his 10. Uh, So, you have the first play here, um, and I just in for everybody else who's kind of moving about doing their own things especially with Mihail I'd like for you guys just to roll a um, intelligence check for the remainder of you so Don whenever you're ready let us know what exactly it is that you are doing is it possible for me to to weave or use more than one set of Cold elves to bow at the same time because he's holding is he holding a knife to need or is he holding anything to her or is he just holding her he's just holding her he's just holding her at the moment yeah. okay so um i'm going to attempt i'm going to talk to dragoslav just attempting to distract him um mm-hmm. and slow him down and i'm basically going to take that sword and uh i'm going to position it uh up and behind the back of his head so that I can immediately jut it down into his spinal column to uh, kill and incapacitate him all in one blow if possible. Alright. Do you want any kind of roll for that distraction or... um... No, he fails his save in seeing it, so I guess just roll me your uh, damage that you would do with this. Okay, I'm going to use... Four mana, I'm going to use the most powerful spell that I can. One target, save for half. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is a powerful thing. So what happens is this sword comes up behind for you to jut down into his back. Um, As the sword comes up, it'll actually be Need who gasps slightly, seeing it out of the corner of her eye. So he will shift just slightly where you will miss your mark. But even still, you bring it down, doing it 26 damage uh, to him, uh, er injuring him gravely. He does not drop. He is still standing, but this door is uh, sticking securely out of the back of his shoulder and down through his back, causing him to release need from his hand um, and stumble away to the side. Okay, so Don, I guess if I have the opportunity, I'll tell my daughter to run. Yeah, absolutely. Run, need. Um, which she will follow through with. She actually goes right after you. So she will run um, away from him uh, towards the corner of the room, um, and he will turn on you. Uh, Let's see, what will he do? I believe that he is actually going to uh, cast what is called Phantasmal Killer. He is a void magic user like Mihail. Uh, I will need... Ah, need... I will need a... <laughs> intelligence, isn't it? Yeah, an intelligence check, or a saving throw. Okay. And since I cast the spell, I can't counterspell or anything, right? Correct. Oh Ooh, my nice. gosh, and nice. you make it. <laughs> so, teeth. Yeah, absolutely. Ooh. Oh. So I take half? Yep, you're going to take half of that 19 damage as you fight back uh, his psychic attack on your senses, trying to fill you with these horrific images of your daughter dead, um, crawling across the floor, bleeding from the mouth, uh, trying to uh, cause you to instantly just die from the fear that he is instilling within you. Uh, You hold back with everything that you have uh, with that. Uh, and that will bring us into the next round. But before we do, let's look at our members uh, that have rolled their intelligence saves. <clears throat> Sir Khan did not make his save as a secondary um, as he's moving down the streets. By he, one. By one, he sees people moving <laughs> and scattering. 
um, as this is occurring away from it, but he just kind of plays it off as the battle that just took place and maybe them seeing those that have died on the docks because it is in the general direction. But Eretmir, with his critical success, recognizes that something is amiss. Um, and he is going to be able to grab Sirkon, shouting at Literally. him. <laughs> Literally. Grabbing the old man at your side and pushing him towards Don's house in hopes of arriving there in time to whatever has befallen them. And for Mihail, too much time has passed on the docks. Your role is a 28 years. Like they should have gotten back by now. Don's house isn't that far away. Uh, something doesn't feel right. I just envision uh, Eric Mir, that way. <laughs> I just envision Eric Mir picking up Sircon like under his arm and just like running. Right. <laughs> yeah. Him down I don't know. It's his skin's pretty saggy. I might have grabbed him by the scruff of his neck. Hey yeah. now. <laughs> hey now. He looks. He almost looks uh, young, just stretched out. How Throw far over is my Don's shoulder. house? Uh, you'll be able to get there this round. This is just what happened over the last round. So, I, and I, I know we're moving the time a little bit wonky here, but the idea is, is they've actually been fighting a little bit, and you guys are becoming mm -hmm. aware of what's happening. Okay. So, Don, you are actually back at the top of your round with an impressive seven on your initiative out of ten, beating uh, Dragomir or Dragoslav. Uh, I'm gonna turn the sword that's still stuck inside him into a blender. <laughs> I don't think you know what a blender oh. is. That's gonna require an intelligence check. I don't know what a blender is, but it's gonna start spinning inside uh, of his back. Are you gonna like turn it into a drill so it spins and yeah, it's just like <laughs> Jesus Christ. Or just turn it into an axe, just like <laughs> I thought about it, but I was like, no, I want him to suffer, so it's, it's yeah, gonna no. start. Yeah. Uh and again, four mana uh Save for half. Two oh my gosh! All right, that'll be a roll after this fight. Oh, we he made a save. critically critically makes saves. His save. Uh, so for twenty-three damage, he's going to end up taking twelve, keeping him on his feet as this thing is just tearing into his back. He's got to have lost control of his one of his arms at this point. <laughs> um, I will step closer to him. I'll use a little bit of movement to step closer to him. I really want his focus on me and not on need. All right. From behind you, Dorafe steps through the door as well, who has been tracking down this individual and trying to find him. Um, you don't see him come in. Well, actually, let's, let's roll you a wisdom check and see if you see him coming in behind you. Yeah, you do. You see him coming in behind you, um, and he uses air magic, sky magic, and blows Dragoslav right back into the fireplace. Yeah, so I, I don't think that Dawn really trusts Dorafe, so when he sees him goes in, come in, he's like turn half turning to like start fighting on two fronts um, okay. before Dorafe actually does that. And he's like, Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite sure what's going on. Need yeah. grab the butter knife and stab him. Did Dragoslav just perform mitosis? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, crap. He did! <laughs> ah. Avoid yep. magic oh, God. illusion spells. Yep, he's yeah. gonna cast a spell and just mirror image himself um, into the room, into several different spots. Oh, he's still going. And that, <laughs> he's still going, he can't stop. Uh, <laughs> um, and at that time is when we are going to see Mihail, Sirkon, and Eretmir all simultaneously arrive at the doorway behind um, and you guys actually won't have a round this round, but we'll put us at the top, uh, which is going to put Dorfe actually at the top here, um, as he casts a spell uh, to try to deal with the illusions, um, and he is only able to get rid of one of them. Uh, this will then put up Dragoslav next, uh, behind Dorfe, and let's see. Everyone that can see any of Dragoslav's illusions is going to be rolling an intelligence saving throw. 
Well Holy done, shit. everyone. Oh well, God. yeah, indeed. Holy shit. No Every one rolled under. Everyone rolled over a 20. Everyone made it except for need. Oh, God damn it. Oh, God. <laughs> no. Why are we saving her? That dumb kid. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Need will scream out, um, her reaching for her eyes uh, that seem to have lights like shining from the inside, and she is going to back away, taking damage to her eyesight, and that is going to put up Sircon. Uh, Sircon is. I guess I should set up the scene for you, Sircon. You arrive at the door. Uh, seeing Dawn standing here battling against multiple images of Dragoslav. His daughter is cowering in the corner, injured. Dorfe is standing behind Dawn, his hands raised, glowing with magical energy. And across the room, you can see that uh, Roselia Major is already dead. Without any ability to bring her back. So with my intelligence roll, that just, that saves against the attack, right? I don't know which one's which. Correct. Okay. Um, Sir Khan will move in here. Fireball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well? He can't help it. Look at the look on his face. Uh, thinking about it, no. Um, the fire needs like, to be lit. It's not He's, like Dawn's going to need the house after today. Anymore. He just wants to <laughs> rub those fireballs. <laughs> Although, will he get the deposit back on the house? <laughs> Does he care? <laughs> That's a good question. Am I allowed to sell this home before I leave and move the rewards? <laughs> Is that part of the banishment? I'm not I'm pretty sure, sure profane housing. casters don't. They're not able to own property anymore. They're not citizens. <laughs> uh, what I'd like to actually do, and tell me how much mana this is going to cost, because looking at the the spell mana chart, I'm thinking like two. Okay. Um. I assume it's stone magic, but I want to bring the roof down on top. They're all kind of clustered in one area. Okay. Um, just bring the roof down. And bring in dead. down the house. On in that area. <laughs> no, if, it no, brings, no, no, no. if it brings everybody down, I guess it brings everybody down, right? But yeah, drop a house on the kid. Aramir and Sir Mahale are the only ones that live. It won't kill you unless you're a witch. Um, so if you're doing uh, several targets with the sa save having the damage... Well, actually, uh, looking at it, I mean, the, the fireplace is definitely stone, but I don't know if... I, the roof wouldn't be stone, obviously. Yeah, you probably collapse forward. Um, straw. Yeah. yeah, and I would I would assume that'd be more primal magic than, than earth. We can use sky magic to pull it there. Yeah, push it down, knock it down. Push the straw on him. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm allergic! <laughs> His fatal flaw. Is, um... What, what... Hang on. I have an idea. He's gonna use peanuts. No, I'm not gonna use peanuts. <laughs> Turn the bearskin rug back into a bear and... Uh, I think that would be primal too. Oh, yeah, that that would definitely be primal. That would be some badass primal magic. Like I wish I had primal magic to do that, but I don't be primal. <laughs> I imagine there's some mm. profane magic where you can bring things back to life. Like oh yeah, that that would make sense. Do some zombie turn it, stuff. Turn oh, bring your a... mom back and have her kill him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so sad I didn't think of that because I definitely would have if I if I thought of that. Oh my god, that would have been. Do you great. even have that ability? I don't Do you know. have that spell. Of course, doesn't that turn her into like a demon I that she know. has to roam the? No, that's the yeah. speak with dead, animate dead. That's completely different. Oh, yeah, okay. It's just the it's just the corpse. It's not the soul. <laughs> just wanted to check. Yeah, <laughs> it's like oh, this was so cool. Oh crap, mom, All right. I'm so sorry. Has to walk hey. in. How, how rough is Don looking? Hey, animate dead is level Dawn's five. So hmm. oh yeah, Don's hey. like. All right, Sircon's gonna do his job. He's he's actually going to walk up to Dawn, and it's just don't get excited. It's a level one, but I'll do cure wounds. Maybe I only slap have you on the ass. a total of seventeen hit points. That's probably more than I need. Yeah, uh, it's D eight plus my wisdom modifier, I imagine. Which so that's an eight total. Yeah, that that still puts me like that. That I have two wounds now. 
Um, <laughs> That's almost with with nice. his flail, draw, flail drawn. Okay, and that did not put you over the top, right? No, no he a, has. That was, that was one. That was two mana. Okay. So yeah, he's I'm got good. two more until he rolls again. All right, Eretmir. <laughs> oh man, so uh, I, I, I I'm gonna use my ability just to dash up here. And still attack, but I, I was kind of curious. Can I just stand in the middle and do my whirlwind attack on these two? Um, oh yeah, you can use those once per battle, can't you? Yeah. Yep, you sure can. I can hit both of these. Just stand in the middle like this. I think you can. All right. So yeah, he's yeah. just gonna sprint through. Um, you might even hear some chariots of fire playing as he's kind of moving through, <laughs> um, pulling up the axe to just uh, do a nice little pirouette as he swings this. And don't move or miss. I'm trying to make you look cool. Um, so here comes his first swing. Off a twenty. Hit. Still a hit. Still a hit. Still a hit. Yeah. Got some damage on him. There it goes. Very good. And then he twirls around for this guy. Oh, uh, damn. Well, he's the illusion. It missed. Yeah. All right, done. Uh, last place I saw him go was in the fireplace, so I assume that he is still in the fireplace. I am ca going to cause that fire to just erupt into flames directly where he is standing. Alright? So, single target, again, save for half. How much mana? Uh, another four. I I've aged at least once during this. He made it. Yeah, you have. Another four. Well, uh, tw 28 for half would be 14. Yep, he is still standing. Good God. My Lord. All right, that is going to put up... Oh, this guy doesn't need to be here anymore. German Hill. All right. Uh, so, since I'm an illusion or a void caster... Would I be able to determine which one of these is fake as I enter the building, or would I need to take like an action to do that? Uh, you'd have to you'd have to take an action to determine. It'd be like detecting magic. Okay, that's fine. Um, then I'm gonna go ahead and walk in here and cast Shadow Conjuration. All right. And I'm gonna have the two versions um, that are outside the fireplace uh, have their shadows come up mm -hmm. and start to attack them. Looks like everybody made it so we'll just be doing the 2d6 damage. Yep. And you just did the two on the outside? Yeah, so there's two 3 HD creatures, more or less, on those right. two there. And on the two on the outside, that will actually take out both of those illusions. Nice. Very good. And then they'll both turn towards the one in the fireplace. <laughs> Very nice. Because they last for six rounds. <laughs> All right, that puts us at the top of our next round. Dorafe is going to be at the top of the round. Uh, you guys will see him run uh, in this direction and jump across the table, sliding over it. Um, he is going to use his body to protect Need, wrapping himself around her. And you will see this golden energy glow as he heals her from the damage that she took. All right, Dorothy. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had, we had some trepidation there, but I think he's good. <laughs> and that will put up Eretmir. Uh, is this fireplace on fire? <laughs> like, like, didn't you... But I, I think it's just a... Well, I don't know. It depends on whether or not there was still kindling in there. Yeah, I, I he said it got cold, so I think yeah, we're, it, it was dead. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, Eredemir will just run in here, and um, he's just going to swing. Dragoslav's just standing there like a damn casual in the, fly, in the flames. <laughs> he hasn't had a chance to do anything. A oh, God. God. <laughs> a great hit <laughs> by the Ispolini. And uh, oh, there you go. Yeah. yeah and he's dead. Kill him. <laughs> Tell us about this killing blow, Eric. I mean, he's just going to come in and, uh, you know, uh, try to think. 
he's gonna yeah hit him and he's gonna hit the wall and it's just gonna help kind of split him more in half you know just kind of go through better um and and then he's just gonna pull his axe out and and then walk out and say i want some bandages <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> we'll get all of them you want. <laughs> I don't think Don has any, but he's gonna get a welcome. <laughs> Look, to I don't know if I have battles. any either. All right, I with, don't. With that, the battle will end. I've got one. You guys, you all will be out of combat rounds. Dorfe will take Need's hand and walk her over to Don, um, passing her off to her father. Yeah, Don will fall down and just hug her. Is he crying in this emotional moment? I don't think that he has the capacity for that at the moment. Um, I, I will run over to Don's mother, mother and I, I know you already said there's nothing I can do, but I will attempt to do what I can without spending any magic. <laughs> 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 Why not? It's not like one more point would uh, aid you. You've you got two. A, you can only <laughs> wisdom on that there, Sircon. Yeah, with the 25, you know that she has already passed. Um, her death was so abrupt and quick that her soul has left and has made its way to Thrice Nine Lands to move to the Netherworld and hopefully onward to Thrice Ten Kingdom. The best you can do is say a prayer for her. I'll grab her hand and do so. Anyone want to uh, speak to dead to this guy? So, point to the one in the fire, or to Dragoslav. Dawn is going to stand up, still holding on to Need's hand, or holding her close or whatever. Uh, he will step up to uh, Sir Khan. They're not going to allow me to stay to see that proper rights are done. You will see that she is committed to Marhina. I will, my friend. All right. And I... Please. Um, and he's going to take out the dagger that he crafted. And he's going to hand it to, to Dawn. <laughs> um, that seems oddly familiar. <laughs> why? Josh's book. Oh. I hadn't read the book. That's okay. Sure. Um, <laughs> Making moments that you don't know about. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, he'll hand him the dagger and I, I, I will see that it's done. Take this. You, you need to leave as quickly as possible. Uh, um, Don is going to take the dagger and immediately hand it to Need. Now you're going to have to learn to present yourself. And if I remember right, Joshua, the dagger is destroyed if Sircon dies, right? Correct. Sircon uh, has to be destroyed by the dagger for the dagger to be destroyed. Oh, okay. So if... Okay. If Sircon dies, it cannot be destroyed. So mag magic items stay in perpetuity... Like if Sircon were to if Sircon were to die tomorrow, the the dagger could never be destroyed. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, slap. Hey, that's funny. That's and cool. then need stab Sircon. <sighs> right. Well, well that, would the 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 dagger, that would destroy the dagger. Um. Uh, Dorothy will uh, address you, Don. Um. Maker, if it is your will, if you allow it, I would travel with you, yes, and see that need stays safe. She is An hour future. ago, I would have told you to feck off, but I saw what you did. Yeah, we'll travel together. I appreciate it. I thank you, and Mahina blesses you. It is her will that this girl live. Orfei, where is the book? And he's going to shift his high eyes to Mihail and gesture slowly. 
It is safe. It will remain safe. Uh -huh. Mahal will nod at Dorfe when he says that. Yeah. Dawn will turn to Need. <laughs> if you All kinds of turning. <laughs> There's, yeah, where everybody's just spinning in circles in the middle of it. <laughs> we're pure pure ready in the middle of this. <laughs> Erdemir yeah, has a good angle, actually. He can just look at all of you. <laughs> <laughs> He's just speaking to the room. <laughs> if ever you return, seek out the Caligulas. They are the ones who will see that you are safely returned. To Lairheim. We will wait for your return, Mager. And with that, is there anything more from any of the heroes before Don, Dorfe, and Need sail eastward? Eretmir heads back south to his home on Tundras Moor. And Don and I'm sorry, not Don, man, and Mahale and Sirkon remain here in the city to live out the rest of their years and give glory to their family name. Um, Erdemir might just turn around to Dragoslav and see if he has anything good on him. I mean... Uh, he has a sword that was like just yeah, the, yeah. drilling into his spine. Oh, that's was true. That a Hale might sword? take like that an, sword. I don't know. Erdemir just claimed it. Yeah, it's uh, Erdemir's. Don, yeah, Don, Don was taking bandages. it with him. Don was taking that sword with him. It's no good to Erdemir. <laughs> We could sell it to you guys. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sell us our artifact. All right, what are you England? Sword. You know, here, here's the thing. I feel like I feel like Don is like I've got to leave, and he's got some wagon out the door filled with all these artifacts because everyone keeps giving him stuff. <laughs> he's got like all the treasure and everything of the whole city, and he's like, "Fine, I'm going." <laughs> he's leaving with everything. I know. Um, everybody keeps giving me shit. I know. I feel like um, I missed right. an opportunity that I could have had Dragoslav be the creator of that sword, so when you stabbed him with it, it just destroyed. <laughs> 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 uh, I mean, he wasn't killed by the sword. He was killed by Eretmir's axe. The true. sword just yeah. happened that, to be that's in his true. body. He didn't time. actually create it. I was like, <laughs> I might have missed an opportunity, but I, I like that. Yeah. Um, now, the only thing Sirkon's going to do is just, again, shake Eretmir's massive hands and thank him. And then, Erdmir will hand you a bottle of wine. <laughs> yeah, that he's gonna take. <laughs> that's that's Erdmir's customary. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, that's, we I'm have a whole bunch that. in our party sheet, so that's what he's been pulling from. So <laughs> that's hilarious. So, Mahal will uh, give Erdmir some bandages for the road. Don <laughs> travel safe, all, friend. <laughs> Don will let you all know that he'll be heading east along the coast for the time being. So if you want to reach him in Clucas, that's the way to reach him. Um, but he doesn't know where he'll end up. That's just the direction he's heading for the time being. Be right. right. Safe travels. I believe that that wraps up our story of the Ninth Ascension as Don and Dorfe need to head eastward, which at some point Dorfe will tell Don that they are heading off to seek out the ash tree um, in order to restore what youth they can to who they are. Um, and again, Eric Mir will head south to Tundras Moor to inform the seventh of the happenings that have occurred here in Leerhain. While Mihail Caligula finds himself oftentimes at odds with the Kluk family who continuously question his authority. At some point, uh, Gabriel Caligula will pass in the wars against the Bukhari and Mihail will take on the role of Surtur, um, from which he will then have his own son, Dagomar, uh, that will function underneath him in the years to come and Sirkan uh, at some point will end up actually passing into the wars to the Bukhari as well as the years come on and his life whittles away but not before he is blessed by a brother uh, that is given to him by his two mothers who nearly sacrifice their own lives in their child's creation but that will wrap up the story of the Ninth Ascension. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us here on Dungeon Brew. We hope that you enjoyed the story. We hope to see you next time for our next campaign. Hit the like button and subscribe button, and we will see you then. In the realm of Aenar, nestled within the expansive tapestry of Thrice Nine Lands, the Gilded Age is coming to an end. In the coastal city of Learheim, 
ages to years, devout to the Frozen Witch, harness the power to wield the same energy that stitches together reality. Yet winds of change whisper the name of Volos, the Horned God. The Ninth Council rises, and our heroes, staunch Carrion loyalists, embark on expeditions to safeguard Stuhian history while defending against their wicked enemies. The celestial dance of Marhina's worshippers is disrupted by the growing shadow of Volos, and the imminent clash between the Carrion and Ninth Councils threatens to reshape the very fabric of Aenar. Amidst this turmoil, our heroes navigate treacherous landscapes, from the frozen vase where dragons roam to the hidden conclaves of the bloodthirsty skinsfitches. Each expedition reveals fragments of a forgotten past, hidden truths, and the intricate connections between Stuhian magic and the divine realms. As the Stuhians grapple with the choice between allegiance to Marhina or Volos, loyalty becomes a precious commodity. Our carrion heroes, entrusted with preserving Suhian heritage, face moral dilemmas, forge unlikely alliances, and confront the shadows that lurk within their own ranks. The world of Aenar awaits, a canvas painted with hues of enchantment and conflict. Will our heroes unravel the secrets that bind thrice nine lands, or will they succumb to the inevitable tide of a revolution? Brace yourself for an epic, episodic tale, where our every choice resonates across the realms, shaping the destiny of Aenar itself.